this is Renaz Zabaila for Unimind.org. Uh, I am at Volta 2018. It's an expo in New York City, Pier 90. And I'm talking to Daniel Bodner. Great. How are you, Daniel? I'm doing very well. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your history, like how you started out, you know, and how long you've been painting, and what are you trying to portray in your paintings? Well, um, I started painting in the 1980s and uh, used to paint just more abstractly figures. And then, uh, you know, I lived in Amsterdam for many years. It was in 2005 that I came back to New York and uh, started painting these cityscapes, images of New York City, with a concentration on space and light, really. Uh, they're kind of a meditation on photography also. They're very much made to look like photographs in a way, right. but, but of course when you look closely at them, they're more abstract. How do you start these paintings? Do you actually snap a photo and I then you work off of it? And make, yes, I walk around and make lots of photos and uh, then I will make sketches from the photos, also sometimes in Photoshop, changing elements of, from one photo to the next. So they're not always exactly realistically New York, they're very versions of, my own sort of version of what I want to see. I see. Uh, what do you seek in your art? Uh, light and space and, you know, I think uh, that's, that's what these are mostly about. Mm. The word photograph is actually writing with light, right? Why not just take photographs and yeah. not well, painting? <laughs> yeah, when you, when you transform something from one form to another, it kind of gives it a power. So I think that uh, I use the photographs as a source of inspiration. Uh, and move uh, from you know one image to what I'm making as a way of re-experiencing that place or that space or that time, um, and it gives the viewer sort of a separation and a and a moment where the viewer can uh, uh, find something for themselves in the work. I see. What did you find for yourself in this particular one? I'm pretty sure you. You know, it's not the original photograph. You move things around or something like that. Yeah, people are. Uh, I've I've altered where people stand and move. You know, someone from one photograph to another, um, and that's just, just for com com yeah, compositional purposes. And then finding a balance that seems interesting to me. Um, I'm generally when I you know I take lots and lots of photographs, often into the sun, so I don't even see really what what I'm photographing. Mm -hmm. But just silhouettes. Uh, in a way, kind of yeah. So. I think that I'm uh, looking to, you know, I, I walk around the city and just f there's a moment when I feel, if you want to call it inspiration, something that, oh, that needs to be captured somehow. So I'll make a lot of photographs from that moment and look at them all on my computer screen and change things around, make small drawings, small paintings, and then larger paintings. Daniel, talk a little bit about your technique. I, I noticed there is some splatter going on and some bluish uh, uh, accents, if you will, and, and there's some, some kind of washing that... Uh, I mean, wh how do you approach uh, your technique? How do you start? Let's say it's a blank canvas. What do you do? Well, I often start actually with a, just a surface of white. So I'll put paint on that's a sort of uneven and let it dry for weeks or a month and then sand it down. And it just kind of creates a visual surface for the canvas that I, that I like to work on. From there, I'll use uh, color as an underpainting, which will then kind of poke through a little bit. In this case, it was a lot of blue. Um, and uh, again, I'm, I'm referencing photography and light on the lens. You know how sometimes when you make a film or a video or a photograph, there's, there's light coming at you from different places and it sort of reflects off the lens. They call it halation, I think. Um, this is meant to kind of reference those little light flares that you see. It's also just kind of a visual texture that's on the canvas that allows your eye to you know, it, it keeps you there a little longer, I think, and uh, gives you something to sort of chew on visually. But these, these are not splatters like, like, you know, the Jackson Pollock's kind of approach. Well, not with paint, no, because these are, this, these are all oil paintings. So this is a thin layer of oil paint, and then I spatter on some turpentine, which 
ra randomly eats away. Sometimes it ruins the, <laughs> the painting, but <laughs> then you have to start over. You've got to be careful about these things, huh? Oh, yeah, you have to do it judiciously. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And what do you think about the, the art world today? I'm talking about, you know, from an artist's perspective, you know, the art, the business of art. What's your perception? What's your perspective as of modern times? Well, it's, uh, it is very much in flux at the moment. I think it's changing a lot right now. The, ga the, the sort of uh, uh, system that was built that's been around for a long time yeah. seems to be changing. There are more and more art fairs. Galleries are closing. I even know some galleries here in New York that don't have a brick and mortar gallery anymore. They just go to art fairs or a show in special places. So the why do you think it's happening? What what's going on? Is it the the abundance of just photo images and lack of uh, I don't know c uh, contemplation for the viewer? Mm, I don't know if that's it. I think there's it's something a, a shifting. Uh, I think it has more probably to do with economic, <laughs> economics than art. But um, I don't really know. If I knew, then I could, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But um, I think there's just, it's just a shifting paradigm. Um, it's happening here in New York, but it's happening all over, everywhere I see. Galleries closing, larger galleries getting larger, smaller galleries getting smaller or closing. So is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? I don't know, but there seems to be I mean, I remember in the 80s, there were, there were no art fairs. There was like two art fairs, or, you know, there were very few art fairs. In America, there was the Navy Pier Show in Chicago, and then, yeah, Basel in Switzerland, and, and uh, there was one in Cologne, Germany, and that's all there were, really. And now there's loads and loads of art fairs, so. So more art fairs, but uh, less galleries. It seems that, what it seems that way. I mean, there are a lot of galleries, of course, still, but, um, you know, I think that there seems to be less. Yeah, it's in decline. So my last question is, what is art to you? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, transformation, I think. Uh, the movement of inspiration from one thing to another, from person to object to person. That's what I would, something like that.